What up? Yup, it's me, Wall Street. You guessed it. I want to talk about the team out in Cleveland because it's getting scary. It's getting scary, the performance that they're putting on early on this NBA season. So as I sit here talking to you all, the Cavaliers are a perfect 10-0 on the season, which I believe is their best start in franchise history, which considering that they had LeBron James for a lot of their recent history, it's pretty pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive. Um, they're obviously the best team in the league right now, currently the only undefeated team now that the Oklahoma City Thunder have sustained a loss. And as I sit here recording this, they are suiting up to play the Brooklyn Nets in Cleveland tonight at 7.30 p.m. So by the time you all hear this, it's very well possible that the Cavs are 11-0. But we'll see. Well, we'll see. But what I want to talk about is, you know, we, we constantly see a ton of regular season teams have a high level of success and then that success does not translate to the postseason so I want to talk about if I believe the Cleveland Cavaliers are truly title contenders considering this amazing start that they've had so far and I'm not gonna lie I think they are I really do think that they have a chance you know with the addition of Kenny Atkinson being the head coach now and having the same core of their team that they had last year, you know, and they had a decent season last year. Um, You know, it was a little up and down. They went through periods where they were really good. And then they went through periods where they were kind of mediocre. They didn't really go through a time periods where they were like bad, bad, but like they just, they weren't, they didn't always look great. And obviously the Celtics were always kind of right there. And we're like, all right, this is clearly the most talented team in the league. So can Cleveland kind of, you know, do anything to, you know, mess with their stance. But, you know, when they met in the playoffs, it was, I don't don't want to say it was one-sided, but, like, it kind of felt like the Celtics were just going to, they were going to get through it, right? And they had the home court advantage, so it's a little different. But if Cleveland finds a way to finish as the number one seed in the Eastern Conference above Boston, and they meet Boston again in the playoffs, and, you know, if it continues to kind of follow suit how, you know, this regular season is already gone, it's likely that it'll be Cleveland the one seed and Boston is the two seed. So they probably would not meet until the conference finals. But either way, Cleveland would still have the upper hand by having that, you know, the four games at home out of a possible seven as opposed to having only three. So I think they have a chance. And I think a lot of that has to do with their core, you know, really dividing the workload. They have six guys averaging 10 plus points per game. So their leading scorer is Donovan Mitchell at 22.6. Second is Darius Garland at 20.5. Evan Mobley is third at 17.9. Jarrett Allen fourth at 14.9. Karis LeVert at 12. And Ty Jerome at 10.6. And both Karis LeVert and Ty Jerome have not started a single game this year. So you have two guys coming off the bench putting up 10 plus points. That's huge. That is super big. Um, And Karis LeVert has a very high assist to turnover ratio, 5.1. It's just, it's looking good. It's really looking good. And you obviously have Evan Mobley and Jared Allen who are just fantastic defenders of the paint and you know you have Isaac Okoro who's a very solid perimeter defender doesn't get a lot of steals or deflection but moves his feet very well and is very good at guarding guys out on the perimeter is typically tasked with guarding the best player on opposing teams not you know it doesn't do a ton offensively frankly but you know that's not really his niche and there's plenty of other guys scoring on this team so it's not as big of a deal but my point is they have a very deep team and they have decent veteran leadership as well i mean donovan mitchell is a great leader for your team really good veteran presence at this point in his career 
um, Tristan Thompson, you know, who was part of that Cavs team that won the NBA championship in 2016. Also a great piece to have, you know, bringing back that energy from that championship team. He's not logging a lot of minutes, you know, only five minutes a game in five games, but just having him in the locker room on the bench, it's very, very useful, very useful. But Donovan Mitchell is averaging 22.6 points per game, playing less than 30 minutes a game. He's playing 29.9, which I know that's basically 30 minutes a game, but it is under 30 technically. And he's doing a great job. I mean, they're just, they're really not expending a lot of energy. It seems like, like Jared Allen is leading the team in minutes at 30.5. All of their other starters are paying, are playing less than 30 minutes a game. Jared Allen is the only guy on the team playing 30 plus minutes a night. So if they can continue to win like this without really like stressing out their guys in terms of minutes, I really don't see how they're going to have a hard time, you know, really coasting their way to the playoffs. And then, you know, with how wide open the East is right now and just how injuries are looking down the line for all these other teams, it might be pretty easy for them to make it through the first and second round, right? It might really be the conference finals where they're looking at the Celtics and being like, okay, this is our real challenge, right? But frankly, if they meet up with the Celtics in the conference finals and then make it to the finals, I would argue that the Celtics are probably gonna be a tougher matchup than anyone they face in the finals, unless they face um, Oklahoma City. I would say Oklahoma City is probably gonna be the toughest matchup for any Eastern Conference team if they meet in the finals. I think Dallas is looking good too, but like, you know, I I personally think the depth of the Thunder is better than the depth that the Mavericks have. I think the Mavericks did great by adding Klay Thompson, adding Najee Marshall, doing a lot of good moves in the off season. But when you play from October to June and then, you know, Luca was playing in the Olympics, not a lot, but was playing in the Olympics. And, you know, he's tired. You can tell. Like, his numbers are down. He's not... He doesn't really look like himself yet. He's not really in true season's form at this point. I hope he gets there because he's super entertaining to watch. But I think OKC has a better chance to make it to the finals and give a Cleveland or a Boston way more of a run for their money than Dallas does at this point. I think Dallas needs like a year where they, you know, get bounced in the first round or something, and then they they come back the next year, right? Phoenix is looking great too. I think Phoenix could be a great matchup for Cleveland or Boston as well. But, you know, we're not, we're not there yet. But I do think the Cavs have a very good chance. And I think if they finish with 65 plus wins on the season, Donovan Mitchell's got to be up for MVP uh, MVP consideration for sure because there's there's no other player that you can point to in my opinion at that point who would have more of an impact like no one expected them to be this good right so I think that's going to play a lot into the voters minds I still think if Boston finishes second in the east and they finish second in the NBA you know in terms of like overall record I think it's going to be hard to not give it to Jason Tatum, but Donovan Mitchell's certainly going to be in the conversation by far. So, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be really interesting. I'm probably going to watch the Nets game tonight. You know, I've been interested with the Nets. They've been playing a lot better than I thought they were going to play. And I love watching Cam Thomas and Ben Simmons, but it's going to be interesting to see, you know, this team in Brooklyn, who's really being like, you know, touted as, you know, bad and not being a good team I feel like they're gonna come out and try to gut punch Cleveland right away you know especially in Cleveland like what do they have to lose right so Cam Thomas is gonna be out there firing shots away like no other like bam cannon all that so let me know what you guys think though you know I know I I don't know if I cater to a lot of Cleveland fans on this channel but It's a great time to be a Cleveland Cavaliers fan, I must say. And it's shocking to me that they're doing this well when there isn't someone named LeBron James on the team. So let me know your thoughts. Do you guys think 
Cleveland has a chance to truly contend for a title this season? Let me know in the comments below. As always, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Help support the channel so I can give you guys more and more content. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. If you did not like the video, give me a thumbs down and let me know how you really feel. I'll catch you guys with the next one. In the meantime, stay safe, watch some basketball, take care of yourself, and take it easy. Dose.